Hi, I'm Furkan, and I'm developing a football game with my game engine. In this video, I'm going to talk about GoalNet physics, which is based on cloth physics with verlet integration and interacting with the net with continuous collision detection. For a football game, one of the most important visual feedback is GoalNet physics. It connects the player to the gameplay. Since I want a AAA look and feel for my game, this feature must be implemented correctly and it needs to be visually and physically appealing. When I looked at the behavior of a goal net, it's obvious that I needed to implement a cloth physics solution to simulate the net. Before my own implementation, I tried the built-in cloth physics solution that comes with the bullet physics engine, but I couldn't get it to work for my intentions. I constructed the net, but the ball was tunneling through the net. Even though I tried potential solutions, and for some reason, it wasn't performing well enough. I was really disappointed with the result. Then I looked for possible alternative solutions. I found lots of examples with verlet integration for cloth physics. I read several docs and watched videos from the coding train and Pikuma. Surprisingly, it's a really easy implementation for a problem that looks and sounds like hard to solve. In this algorithm, a cloth is represented as points that are connected with each other with sticks. For each frame, points are updated to their new positions, and after all points are updated, for each stick, the distance between points are constrained. This makes sure the points are not drifting away from each other, and acts rigid as a whole. The term verlet integration is the numerical method that is used to calculate the new position of each point in the cloth. This method is alternative to others like Euler, semi-implicit Euler, and midpoint method. The main difference is, Velocity is not used directly to calculate the new position of points. Rather, the difference between current and previous position decides the next position of points. Verlet integration provides good stability and performs well enough for real-time applications like games. I started to implement the algorithm and after a short period of time, when I ran it, it looked perfect already. The first step was done. I had my cloth physics set up. Next step was generating a cloth with some parameters. I decided to generate the cloth from a mesh, which contains the information that I need, which are points, and how the points are connected to each other. This gives me the flexibility to model the cloth in Blender as I want, and then import the mesh in the engine. I always try to involve Blender in my workflow, because it's a powerful tool, and I don't have to implement all the features in my engine. Because at this point, my engine is a runtime environment, rather than a full-featured editor. With exported meshes, I successfully generated a cloth and specified which points are pinned. These pinned points are the ones the cloth is hanging by. For example, the attachment points of the net to the goal. Next, I needed to render the cloth as a mesh. For rendering a mesh, a renderer needs vertices and faces. Since I already generated the cloth with a valid mesh, I was on the right track. Imported mesh has the points that match the cloth's points, but as the cloth simulated, points are updated, and the mesh only has the initial state of the points, so I needed to update the mesh points to synchronize with the simulation. With synchronizing the points, I can render the mesh as I always do, because the points are going to always represent the latest state of the cloth. Updating the points is actually sending the updated position data to the GPU. Along with updating the points, I also needed to update the vertex normals, which represent the direction that the points are facing. You can think of it like, the points on the cloth surface are always changing its facing direction as it folds. After the synchronization implementation and applying the textures, I finally had a beautiful cloth that was waving by the wind. The last part was making interactions with the cloth. In my case, I have a goal net, and the possible interaction with this net are the ball and players. Currently, I only concentrated on the ball. I'll look at other interactions later in the future as I need. To collide the cloth with a ball, I basically needed a collision detection algorithm. After some research, I decided to develop a system that checks each triangle of the cloth against the ball, and if there is any intersection found, the ball and the points on the triangle should react, based on their states. In current implementation, the ball and the triangles are checked each frame with only their current positions. When the ball is too fast, it can teleport over the cloth between two frames, and this can't be noticed. So I needed a more intelligent algorithm. To solve this problem, I looked online and found a GDC talk from 2018 by Chris Lewin. The talk was about a more advanced solution for self-collision of a cloth, but it contained my answer, and it was continuous collision detection. This approach aims to detect interactions that happen between frames. There are multiple methods to detect intersections, 
and I went with a basic one, which is converting discrete data to continuous data. In my case, I had a ball, and I needed to create a shape that represents the continuous state of the sphere between two frames. This shape is called the swept sphere. So, after creating the swept sphere with positions from last frame and current frame, I needed to test it against the triangles of cloth. This ensures that no collision is missed between frames, as the collided object moves along a continuous path rather than discrete points. Then, I found an algorithm to test a swept sphere against a triangle. It was from a paper from 2003, which is Improved Collision Detection and Response by Casper Fowerby. After integrating this algorithm to my solution, finally, I managed to stop the ball when it's moving too fast. I also added more debug elements to visually check what's going on. The end result was satisfying. The implementation serves acceptable results with normal cases. It performs well without advanced optimizations because the scene just has a single cloth and collider pair. I added an axis aligned bounding box check for the whole cloth, but in future, I may need to create an octree with triangles of cloth when the scene density is increased. I also can improve the net elasticity, which enables the use of different types of nets. My development style is making each module easily upgradable in the future and leaving the development of a version as soon as possible. This makes the revisits like fresh starts, and this keeps me motivated. Now, my football game has goal net physics. I am still working on my character system to enable goalkeeper mechanics, which are jumping and hand movements. I'm taking my chance to find an approach to make the character system ragdoll enabled as this early. Thanks for joining me on this journey. We're just getting started, and I'm thrilled to have you on board. See you in the next one.